Hello my dear students, this is your accounting coach ARD. I hope you are all doing well. The topic of the day is partnership accounts. Now as you may be aware, there are three forms of businesses basically. One is sole trader, then another one is partnership and then there can be a company. So today we are going to discuss about partnership. A partnership is an agreement between two or more individuals so that they can earn profits together. So they are making a business with a view to aim, uh, with the aim to earn profits. Now we are now more concerned about the accounting treatments of partnerships. As you all may be aware, you have already studied final account for sole traders. A sole trader is a single owner. So whenever you are going to make account for a sole trader, there is a normal income statement that start with sales, then we deduct return inwards, then we go to cost of sales, then after deducting cost of sales from the revenue figure, we get the gross profit. After the gross profit, we add other incomes such as commission received, rent received, discount received, then we go on deducting expenses. Now when the expenses are deducted, the final answer for income statement for a sole trader is basically profit for the year, also known as net profit. But the newer term is profit for the year. So uh, you have already studied making an income statement for, for a single person that is a sole trader. Now what is the difference in the accounts when we are talking about partnerships? Profit for the year is exactly the same as we calculate in a sole trader. So there is no difference when making an income statement of a partnership or for a sole trader. There is no difference altogether. Now the newer thing in this is an appropriation account. Now what is an appropriation account? Appropriation account means the profit that we have earned from the business. How can we distribute this profit among the partners? how this profit can be divided among partners. So this is an appropriation account. Now basically earlier in CAIEs, there used to be a 40 marks in the examination for this partnership. So what we need to do, first of all, we need to make an income statement. Then the place where income statement ends is exactly the place where an appropriation account starts. So this appropriation account is basically part of an income statement. It is started at the place where an income statement ends. But in the newer pattern, as you may be aware, in CIE O-level examination, uh, there is no 40 marks question. There are all 20 marks questions. So we cannot expect an examiner to test income statement, appropriation account, and statement of financial position, all of that in a 20 marks question. So what does the examiner do? Examiner already calculates profit for the year figure for you. You must be given profit for the year figure and you, you are required to just to make an appropriation account only, not the income statement. So we'll be starting with profit for the year, which we can calculate from an income statement or uh, most probably this figure would be given in the examination. As the income statement is of two columns, appropriation account is also continuity of it. So this will also be a two column. So there are only three adjustments in it. Firstly, there is an interest on drawings. And uh, as you may be aware, what is the drawing is? Drawing is whenever an owner or partner withdraw money or stock from the business, this is drawing. So there is an interest on drawing in this a partnership scenario. Why does an interest on drawing is being charged? Let's suppose there are two partners in a business. One is Mr. A and one is Mr. R. One is Mr. Ahmad and one is Mr. Raza. Now, there are two partners. Whenever the business grows and we start earn profits, then all of the partners become very complacent and they are all asking for drawings. One of uh, Mr. Ahmad wants to go on a holiday on a, some exotic place with his family and Mr. Raza wants to buy a luxury car. So both of them want to draw money out of the business now what happens if we all draw out the money from the business the business has less capital now left so that the capital is not enough to perform the business and to uh, run the business in an efficient manner so how can we discourage the owners because we cannot stop the owners the, they are owners of the business you cannot say yeah, you can, don't dare to draw money out of the business so he will say I'm the partner who is there to stop me so there's only one thing that they can uh, discourage from drawing our money out of the business that is we charge 
interest on their drawings now how much amount they have drawn out from the business will be multiplying with a certain percentage and that percentage will be given in a question for example there is a 100,000 drawing by Mr. A and the interest rate is 5% so we will be multiplying 1 lakh with 5% in order to get the interest uh, of uh, 5,000 then in the same with the Mr. Raza and we will be adding up both this in the profit for the year now why are we adding the interest on drawing we are adding interest on drawing because the interest on drawing is being charged from the partners and the money is coming into the business so the profit for the year whatever the profit for the year for the business is that is increased by the interest that is being charged by partners we are charging interest from partners who are we we are the business we are charging interest from the partners so this interest comprise as profit for the business therefore it is added up into the overall profit for the year then we have less interest on capital for example again there are two partners mr ahmed and mr raza mr ahmed invested for example uh, 500000 and mr raza has only invested 200000 now if we are giving equal profit to both of them so mr ahmed will be angry on this decision why because Mr. Ahmed's argument is that that he has invested 500,000 that is far more capital than Mr. Raza has invested that is only 200,000 so Mr. Ahmed's uh, argument is that and why is Mr. Ahmed upset because he complains that uh, if I have invested more, I expect more return in uh, from the business. And Mr. Raza has invested less, so you must be paying lesser amount to Mr. Raza. But because both of them are working uh, equally hard for the business, they are doing equal effort for the business. So therefore, we decided the profit and loss ratio would be equal. But uh, first of all, we'll be giving interest on the partners to the amount that they have invested in the business. For example, Mr. Ahmed has invested. 5 lakhs so we'll be multiplying 500,000 multiplied by for example interest is given in the question that is 6% so 500,000 to 6% this becomes 30,000 then Mr. Raza has only invested 200,000 so we'll be multiplying 200,000 with 6% in order to get 12,000 figure so we'll be deducting this interest in capital in this way the partner that invests more will be eligible for more interest and the partners that uh, he's investing he or she's investing less amount will be eligible for less Less interest on capital then after interest on capital we'll be deducting salaries uh, maybe there is one partner who is working more than other partner or maybe one partner is working and another partner is not working at all or he is a silent partner sleeping partner therefore that a partner works for the business who is involved in decision making and operating the business will be eligible for salary as well so there can be salary or there can be bonus or commission as well in some questions so basically there is salary will be deducted salary from this so as you may be aware uh, for because salary is an expense but whenever we are giving salary to the owners this is not an expense of the business this will be treated in the appropriation account and if we are giving salary to the employees of the business this will be treated as an expense in an income statement that the part that comes before appropriation account will be deducting it in the expenses if the salary is for employee if the salary is withdrawn by partners it will be deducted from in the appropriation account now after profit for the year we'll be adding interest on drawing and we'll be deducting these two figures that is interest on capital and salary in order to get the final figure that is a residual profit or residual loss residual is one that remains in the business after deducting all of this then this residual profit what should we do should we give it to uh, some charity red cross or what no this residual profit will be divided into two partners in the ratio that is given in the question uh, sometime it gives ratio equal equal partners sometimes it gives ratio the examiner gives 2 is to 1 means 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 so 2 third of the profits residual profit will be shared by Mr. A and 1 third by Mr. R or maybe the invest examiner says that the profit is divided in the ratio of the amount of capital invested for example Mr. A has invested 500,000 and Mr. R has invested 200,000 so the total capital become 500 plus 200 is equal to 700 so the proportion for Mr. A would be 500 upon 700 500 is the capital invested by mr. a and 700 is the total capital invested in the business so 5 upon 7 ratio multiplied by a residual profit again mr. R ratio would be 2 upon 7 200 upon 700 multiplied by residual profit so there can be a scenario where this this is not a residual profit this is a residual loss why because uh, if we add profit for the year and interest in drawing and deduct 
these two figures the final answer is coming in negative if the final answer is coming in negative this means this is a residual a loss not a residual profit if there is a residual profit we are deducting this uh, share of profit but if this is residual loss we will be adding up these two figures in order to make it zero if this is positive figure we will be deducting this figure and in order to make it zero if this is negative figure we will be adding up share of loss so in order to make this zero so this was basically appropriation account i hope you like the uh, concept behind appropriation account and you understood the concept behind if you haven't subscribed the channel do subscribe it now no i'm not ending the video i'm just reminding it to do subscribe it now and now we'll be moving forward to the next part that is current account my dear students after making an appropriation account we should move forward for making a current account uh, now in a uh, partnership scenario we cannot just jump to statement of financial position that is balance sheet after making an income statement and appropriation account now it's not the case first of all we'll be making an income statement then followed by an appropriation account then followed by a current account and lastly we'll be going to make a statement of financial position you cannot make a statement of financial position until and unless you are done with making a current account now what is a current account means now first of all i uh, should give you a disclaimer that this current account has nothing to do with the current account that you have studied in economic scenario economics uh, paper so current account deficit and all that stuff this is not the current account that we're talking about right now this is something different uh, now let me uh, explain you with an example what is a current account mean uh, first of all you should answer some of my questions and the question is that uh, what happens when a business earns some profit does the profit increases our capital or decreases our capital so i heard your answer the profit increases our capital now what happens when the business incurs a loss loss reduces our capital now what happens if we draw money out of the business drawing drawing reduces our capital so profit loss drawing these all things these all transactions uh, fluctuate our capital sometimes capital goes up because of profits or additional investment in the business and sometimes capital goes down because of the loss and expenses and drawings from the business so we do not want our capital to fluctuate in a manner that we used to fluctuate in a sole trader because see if I am the only owner of the business I am a sole trader so it doesn't matter my capital goes up and down I do not have to answer to anyone uh, because of fluctuation of my capital but in the case of partnership for example there are two partners one is Mr. A and one is Mr. R, their capital, if it is fluctuating, this is an alarming situation. Why it is a problem for us? Uh, first of all, we have already studied appropriation account. We studied there that we need to give partners interest on capital. So interest is capital on basically is based on the amount of capital they have invested in the business. If the capital is fluctuating, there will be difficulty calculating interest on capital. So therefore, we want our capital to stay fixed. We do not want our capital to fluctuate every year. So what should we do with the items that are fluctuating our capital that is profit, loss, drawing? What to do with these items? We need to uh, enter these items into a separate account which is known as current account. Current account is basically part of capital account or I can also say that it is an extension of a capital account. So whatever disturbs our capital, whatever fluctuates our capital will be kept in a separate account known as current account. So let's start up with this current account. First of all, we'll be writing the balance BDs, that is balance brought down. Uh, balance brought down would be already given in a partnership question. Now, as you may be aware, my dear students, that a capital is basically a credit. The nature for the capital is credit. Whenever a capital increases, it is always credited. And whenever it is decreased, it is will be debited. So if the capital is credit, the current account should also be a credit. So balance BD on the, will be on the credit side. Now, there can be a scenario uh, where a current account balance comes on the debit side. Why it is that so? It is known as an abnormal balance. Why it is an abnormal balance? Because capital is basically credit. If it is a debit balance, this is an abnormal balance. So why does an abnormal balance or debit balance arise on a current account? A debit balance arises on a current account. Why? Because the partner has over 
withdrawn money out of the business a partner has withdrawn more money out of the business uh, than his share in the business now the amount that he has earned in the business that he or she has earned or uh, the business due uh, has to pay this amount to the business uh, to the partner that is profit if he has withdrawn more than the amount of profits this is known as a debit balance that is uh, it is an asset for the business if it is a normal balance it is a liability for the business business need to pay this amount to mr a and r if it is a debit balance this is a asset for the business now whatever uh, we uh, whatever amount we need to pay to the partners will be coming on the credit side whatever we need to pay we need to pay to the partners interest on capital interest on capital always comes on the credit side why because we need to pay this to the partners then we have salaries again we need to pay this salary to the partner therefore salary would be credited then the bonus and commission is also similar nature profit share uh, now let me ask you a question what happens uh, whether the profit increases her capital or decreases her capital profit always increases her capital therefore uh, profit would comes on the credit side that is current account would be increased then interest on loan now what is this interest on loan whenever any partner gives loan to his partnership whenever any partner gives loan uh to his own partnership business that partner is entitled to interest on loan uh interest on loan percentage is sometime given in the question if it is given will be using that percentage but if the interest on loan percentage is not given in examination question we assume a fixed rate of 5% for what only for interest on loan and nothing else only interest on loan rate would be fixed at 5% if the percentage is not given in an examination question now from where does we assume this 5% there is a law there is a, a act of partnership known as partnership act so partnership act 1890 is basically is an english law which states that whenever we make a partnership and we forgot or whenever we do not make a formal agreement interest on loan rate would be 5% fixed but whenever the interest on loan rate is given uh, we'll be using that rate whether it is higher or lower but uh, if it's not given we'll be using 5% then we have interest on loan is basically an expense for the business it will be coming in an income statement and will be treated as an expense uh, such as a similar loan if you are taking loan from the bank will be uh, paying the interest to the bank will be uh, using that as an expense in an income statement so this interest personal loan will be also used as an expense but uh, uh, rather than crediting it to accrued expense or other payable will be crediting it to the current account of the partnership then we have drawing you may be already aware that drawing reduces the capital so the drawing would be on the debit side drawing reduces the capital then interest on drawing would be on the similar side because interest on drawing we are not giving to the partner but we are taking out from the partners interest on drawing then you may be aware that loss always decreases the capital so loss will be coming on the debit side now there is another thing that is salary drawing now what a salary drawing means uh, now whenever the question said that we need to give the salary to the partner salary would be created here in the current account and comes in an appropriation account but if the question specifically states that the partner has already withdrawn his or her share of salary if the partner has already withdrawn the salary the salary would also come on the credit side and at the same time it will also come on the debit side to to cancel out the effect so whenever the question says that salary has been paid to the partner the salary would be coming on the credit side as well as on the debit side of the partner that has withdrawn his salary we can also write a separate uh, Uh, entry for salary drawing or uh, alternatively we can also add it into the drawing so this is a scenario for drawing uh, so the salary drawing would only come on the debit side when the question specifically says that salary has been paid to the partner if the, the question does not specifically says that salary have been paid to the partner so salary would only come on the credit side now we need to balance this thing uh you may be aware that the greater side come on the both side and the shorter side will be balance carried down and the balance carried down would become balance brought down if the balance brought down is on the credit side this is a normal balance and if the balance brought down comes on the debit side that is it is an abnormal balance so normal balance mean we need to pay to the partners this is a liability for the business and abnormal balance mean the partner needs to pay to us because this is an asset for the business i hope you understood the concepts behind current 
bank account so you still if you are convinced you must subscribe my channel and also share this with all your friends again i'm not ending the video i'm going to the third part that is the treatment in a statement of financial position so stay tuned so lastly we are going to move on the statement of financial position uh, now my dear students you may be already aware you have already making statement of financial positions previously known as balance sheet but the word balance sheet is no longer used uh, by the examiners uh, and the, by the international accounting standards we must follow the term statement of financial position so whenever you need to make uh, an SOFP for a sole trader what do you do you start with the assets then there are non-current assets you imagine that concept you have already studied this there are three columns for a statement of financial position for non-current assets we make a cost accumulated depreciation and net book value then after non-current asset comes current assets then total assets after assets comes capital in a sole trader and in a manufacturing environment capital comes as opening capital add profit for the year less drawing then comes the closing capital then after capital comes liability first non-current liability then current liability now the only difference in a statement of financial position of a partnership if we compare this from sole trader the only difference is that is of capital section in a sole trader and a partnership in, in a manufacturing and a sole trader capital is calculated in a simple manner opening at profit less drawing but in a partnership capital is calculated differently in a capital section there are only two items one is capital account and one is current account that's it nothing else capital account this is already given in a question that mr a has invested this amount and mr b or mr r whoever has invested this amount in the business so this is the total capital of the business then what is this this is the current account we already discussed current account we already said uh, that current account is basically part of capital account current account is an extension of capital account now whatever the changes that are taking place in a capital account these are summarized as in a current account so aware from where do we take these balances we have already uh, 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 done making current account these balance brought downs these final balances would be coming in a statement of financial position this balance bd and this balance bd now what is the difference between the two this balance bd is a normal balance and this is the debit balance that is a normal balance so if there is a normal balance we'll be adding up this uh, as you may be aware that capital nature is credit so this mr a capital is also credit all of the capital balances are added together if there is an abnormal balance that is a debit balance it should be deducted here and any balance that is of abnormal nature would be deducted here so this is a debit balance uh, this is the capital we need to pay to the partners we uh, we the business owe to the partners this is a current account balance that we owe to mr a but we do not owe anything to mr b instead mr b owes the business this much amount so what we need to do we need to deduct this amount from this uh, mr a's balance in order to get this for example mr a current account balance is 10000 and mr b is 7000 negative balance so 10 minus 7 the final balance become the normal balance that is credit balance we need to add both of these uh, what happens these two or uh, uh, both of these are on debit side these two balances are on debit side what we need to do we need to minus minus and these are uh, both are added minus minus plus but the sign would be negative so what we need to do we need to deduct this amount from the capital account balance in order to get the total balance now just need to summarize this capital is basically the same capital is given in the question uh, this is a closing capital only difference is that uh, we need to write current account here if the current account is a normal balance that is credit balance these are all added here and any balance that is debit balance that is abnormal balance need to be deducted here so this is the total equity uh, this means closing capital then assets is same capital is this and liabilities are also same then the asset side should always equal capital and liability side i hope my dear students you understood and you benefited from this and if you benefited kindly do subscribe and share it with other students thank you